All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, back again with more Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6. We're up to Episode 8. It's called Told Ya. Uh, so full spoilers if you have not seen this episode yet. Um, also, just really quickly, there's, there is something going to be happening for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, per, uh, I, I don't know if I can really talk about it yet. We're, I'm doing something really cool Wednesday uh, night. Um, I will, once I get more details, it is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. involved, and I know that that's not a big deal on my channel, but, uh, I really like talking about it, and that's what's going to be happening, there's going to be a special thing happening, I will let you know, uh, though, where it is, because I will not be on my own channel, I'll be visiting somebody else's, um, and, uh, so yeah, that's just a little update, as soon as I know more, I don't want to make any promises right now, because it, you know, this is my first time doing something like this, but it is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season uh, 6 related, and so, uh, yeah, so look forward to hearing more about that later. Okay, so, anyway, this is the definition, practically, of what you call a filler episode. It's episode 7. There's six coming, and there were six before. So right in the middle here is where we get uh, everybody kind of catching up, getting to set up the last half of the, uh, the the final part of the ep uh, season, which next week's trailer looks like we're kicking into high gear. Things are going to start moving. We're going to start seeing the really big, you know, the stakes that are that are coming. And honestly, uh, that's the one big thing that I saw about this was what it's going to look like if these things win. Which I mean, come on, they're not going to win, <laughs> but it's going to be interesting to see how we don't lose. Let's put it like that. So, and who will be standing, and will we have answers about this Coulson? Will we figure out, you know, will we ever get our Coulson back? Is this a permanent thing, you know, or are we going to be settled with a Coulson who has to get to know our characters, and then all of a sudden Coulson's going to be a little rough around the edges? Um, it would be really interesting to see him meet some of the current Marvel heroes as Sarge. I, I would definitely like to see everybody walking up to Coulson like, hey, Phil, like, you know, all like he's going to be nice and him just being like, what's this guy's fucking problem? You know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so either way, I'm good. Although, I mean, I prefer classic Coulson, but who doesn't? Um, and a big part of this is little bits of like just people not being able to reconcile that this guy is Coulson in the DNA. This is. Coulson, also, he's also 100 years old, but it's still Coulson, and, you know, so you, we're gonna, we're getting that butting heads thing, especially with Mac, um, and him just, you know, them not liking his attitude, him not caring about theirs, you know, to him it's just like, how many, you know, like, I've got a job to do, these people are in my way, so, I'm sorry, this little gnat, there's a... <laughs> There is one tiny little gnat, and I can't kill it, because it's always, like, just out of reach. Just one bug. I feel like Walter White in that one episode about the width of fly, all of a sudden. So anyway, <laughs> it seems to get real curious about what I'm doing when I'm, whenever I'm filming, too, and I'm, I start looking like I'm having a seizure. Um, oh, speaking of cool things, I got my... First piece of my uh, cosplay, my Captain America cosplay that I'm going to be doing at Wizard World Chicago uh, in August. It's a very important part of my uh, costume. The second part is coming next week, or well, in about two weeks. Uh, and then the third part's coming in about four weeks. Uh, so I'll let you know. <laughs> That'll be a fun video to make. <laughs> um, must stay on track here, though. So, yeah, everybody's just... We're building up to the Shrikes and all that stuff. And we get some interesting things here. I mean, now, of course, with all the Coulson stuff, and, you know, I like that Sky, Daisy, whatever, she doesn't want really anything to do with this. It's just like, you know what? He's not, he's Coulson, but he's not Coulson. Fine. I'm out. Like, I'm part of this thing, but I don't need to know any of the, the weird history going on here. And another thing, I mean, what I can do without is just still, like, it's not going to go away, okay? But the, the Yo-Yo Mac romance thing and everything, and like, you know, May has to come in. And I mean, come on, May, 
I, she used to, I, I almost miss the fact that May used to not want to have these conversations with people. But now that Coulson's dead and everybody knew that they were in love, now May's talking about relationship stuff with Yo-Yo and Mac. And I'm just like, God, you know, like, I know, I guess, you know, in a filler episode, let's get this all out there right now. I wish they could have solved their relationship in an episode like this, you know. Because I guess they want to make it look, don't make it look like she's just going to jump from Keller back to Mac, I guess. Could, but you didn't care about getting Keller killed off anyway, so just let him fall back in love, for God's sake, and stop wasting valuable screen time on a relationship that I, I know a lot of people care about it, okay? I just personally don't. Um, just like I don't care about Deke in this, uh, as usual. I don't care about Deke. Sorry. I mean, I, I like that they're going to try to use him uh, in a positive way, which is, you know, using his brains until Fitz and Simmons gets there. But, you know, and this whole thing about, you know, oh, why didn't you tell me? And it's like, because you're not really a part of this show. You're just shoehorned in like Cousin Oliver on the Brady Bunch, okay? Just be glad you still have a job. <laughs> Boy, this uh, this thing I'm doing Wednesday is going to be interesting with the way that we both talk about this show. So, anyway, I'm being cryptic. But the, the really cool stuff here is with Fitz and Simmons, where, the, where they're back on Kitson. And at least then the, sh the episode kind of comes alive a bit, where Enoch has transported them directly from last episode into the middle of the bar at Kitson, because why not? They probably hadn't torn down the set yet, so <laughs> why not put us back there? And then we get to see fun stuff with Fitz and Simmons, and just like her talking about, you know, being on drugs without talking about being on drugs and Fitz just being an uptight guy about, you know, this is not the place, to, you know, the only one thing to do here is, you know, get in trouble and stuff and she's talking about euphoria. Um, immediately they lose the transporter though because, I mean, I as far as synthetics go, Enoch is pretty prone to, I'm not going to say accident prone or anything, but like, He's not that good of a synthetic. <laughs> like, you'd think a synthetic wouldn't leave his transporter just sitting there for anybody to pick up, is what I'm saying. Like, There's been some silly mistakes in here that make me feel like that Enoch is less synthetic and more human, prone to like making you know errors in judgment like this. But he's still a fun character. I love the way the guy talks. I just love that so much. And man, for a second there, when we are introduced to, uh, I don't know, she looks like she's trying to be Jennifer Garner from season one of Alias here. But you know who she reminded me of was Ava. And I went, I, I, I know it's not her, okay, before anybody jumps down my throat and decides to tell me the entire IMDb page of the actress that's playing this character. But it really, just for a second there, I thought, oh my god, Ava is somehow in space. Somehow one of her constructs took off into space, which wouldn't be impossibly, you know, if they were going to throw us a curveball, that would be one hell of a curveball. Um, but instead, it just so happens that she needs to get a ship to Earth, because she's looking for an artifact, which, come on, I mean, again, it's a little on the nose here. Why would we introduce a character in, like, the halfway point of the show if it did and and give her an interesting enough character to go oh she's not just going to be the person that takes them to earth and then takes off something about this is going to be bigger um and honestly fine whatever you know coinky dink or not it's it's happening so i might as well get on board uh but i'm interested to see where they're going with her and like I said, in this section of the show, it does pick up and gets more interesting. Like the whole thing with them getting their heads, you know, possibly cut off by fucking Anthony Michael Hall. Of all people, who has he... Wait, he made, like, and I'm just, I know I'm getting wax and nostalgic here a little bit, but when did he be, go from, like, the kid in the breakfast club, and then I remember him, Johnny B. Good, he, he started to get a little bigger and looked like he was trying to get rid of that nerd... Uh, you know, stigma around him. Uh, maybe he should have stayed skinny with the way nerd culture is now. But man, he just like, he's just a thick dude now, kind of. I don't know what it is, but he just, it does not look like Anthony Michael Hall to me. I forget that this thing has a timeout button on it and it'll start to 
stopping videos on me. Um, but yeah, Anthony Michael Hall is this guy on Kitson. Like, I guess, why not? <laughs> I wondered what he was going to be. I saw his name in the credits and I'm like, okay, so fine. The guy from Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles is is in this show for some reason. Uh, so the, And that's all there really is to it. It's not like even a special kind of cameo. Like he doesn't really do anything like that goes, oh my god, I'm so glad they got Anthony Michael Hall for this. Um, what else do we got going on? Oh, the whole thing with the cold killing them um, was pretty cool. The whole thing with them putting them together was cool. It was like watching two beta fish come at each other for a second and then they just start destroying everything to get out. Uh, and that there's something bigger. It's, okay, this, this, okay, I mean, as far as, okay, at least, it's just weird that we don't have a, a, oh God, is it the lady? Is she the one? Is she the one that, she's coming to Earth, is she like the leader of the Shrike people? Like, I just thought of this just now, or whatever's going on, is she like the, the big thing that Sarge is waiting for? Or is she going to be like Sarge's love interest from like a different place? And she hasn't caught up and then May's going to have to see Sarge making out with this girl? I don't know. But it's really cool how they do that whole thing. I actually thought that they were going to kill both Yo-Yo and her. I really did. I honestly thought that we might see Yo-Yo go in this scene. Because we haven't really lost anybody besides Coulson. And I, I don't know. I guess Yo-Yo's safe. Maybe I was just kind of hoping Yo-Yo would die. Because, yeah, I, I don't know, I just, I, I'm, I like Yo-Yo just fine, I just, I want to see things get shaken up on this show a little bit more, but, uh, I guess if, they, you know, once they kill off Yo-Yo, then there's only, the only people left are our main characters, our main main characters that have been here from, like, the beginning, uh, alright, so, Sarge really hasn't learned anything. Fitz and Simmons uh, have a ship to get back uh, to Earth with this lady who is, seems really shady about things. I don't know if what I said was right, if, we're, if she's going to be the leader of the bird army. <laughs> it doesn't seem likely, but she's got to have something to do with it. So it's either a long-term, like long-time old love interest of Sarge, or the ruler of, or some sort of, you know, somebody who can command the bird strike things. But, uh, and then we also say goodbye to Enoch, who says he's going to go help his people find uh, their own planet. Which, honestly, I don't think he's going to be gone for the rest of the season. He'll show up like Han Solo at the end of A New Hope, like all, yeah, you know, some crap like that. Like, I remember my saving my best friend, you know. I do like his comments, though, where he's like, oh, I'm not going to really miss you and everything, and I'm bluffing. So he learned how to lie and, and that kind of stuff. That was good. That was good. And I am going to miss him while he's not on the show. Because I, I don't want him to leave, obviously. I think he brings a interesting take on it. I mean, it's just a guy pretending to be a synthetic. And, you know, maybe he doesn't want to be typecast. but uh, Or maybe they're just going to write him off the show or whatnot. But I, I definitely like the character. I like a fish-out-of-water story like this. Kind of like a, We haven't had a good Data character in a while, you know? Like a TNG character like him. So, anyway, before I get too rambly... I. I like I said, this is filler. You know, we're just we're just playing catch up. And while it's entertaining and or enough, I was like fooling around on my video editor while the commercials were on, and I had to make sure that I wasn't uh, missing anything because I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Where I was just like, oh my god, on the edge of my seat. But they all can't be winners. We need spots where the the the, the story slows down enough for our characters to all kind of, you know get all the information they need to move forward so that we don't call bullshit on continuity and bad writing and why didn't this character know that and this and that and the other. So this is that whole point where we just get our connections made to reestablish to move forward to the last six episodes. So anyway, good episode, filler episode, better than Code Yellow or whatever the hell that was called. So anyway... <laughs> If you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Otherwise, this is Robert Smirking on Review saying we'll be back. And uh, keep your ears out for that, uh, ears and eyes out for that uh, notification about something happening this Wednesday night. So, 
This is Robert Smirking Gunner Reasoning. Have a great night, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.